Okay, let's get into it. If you haven't been following this series and any of what I say in this video doesn't make sense, go back and watch the earlier videos. In this tutorial, we create a plugin that performs two GIMP effects in quick succession, so that it can be called from the menus like every other plugin or filter. Now what we're making today is not a particularly desirable effect, but it will teach us the basics. Now what we're going to do here is called automating a workflow. This is what programming is. You break down the task you want to achieve into the smallest number of steps that you can think of, and then you perform those steps in the correct order. The fancy name for the end product is an algorithm, but all that really means is the steps that the program takes. We're going to use a process called incremental development for all of our scripts, and this means every time we add a step to our algorithm, we test it. We keep an eye on the error console and check that it has the effect that we expected. If it works, that's great. If not, then we debug that line until it does what we want it to do. It feels slow doing it incrementally, but believe me, it's much slower to write what you think is the whole script and then run it and have no idea what line caused the error. If you progress one tested step at a time, you will know exactly which line is causing you problems and it should make it much quicker to debug. In the early days, maybe for months, you'll find lots of errors as you learn how Python works and how it wants to receive the information that you're trying to provide. It's a slow progress, but you'll learn a ton about programming. And remember, everything that you don't understand can be Googled, asked about on a GIMP forum, you can look at Reddit's Learn Python subreddit, uh, or you can look on Stack Overflow, which is a programmer's Q&A site. Anyway, let's make the plugin. So the first thing we're going to do is register the plugin. Now what I want to do is run the unsharp mask filter in a very distinctive way, and then turn that image into a black and white image. I'll set up the register for the plugin first by editing the template that we've looked at previously, and saving it with an appropriate name. So here you can see I've changed the name to Extreme Unsharp Desaturation Tut. Uh, I've already made a copy of this script before, so I've just added the tut for the one I'm making for this tutorial. Then I've gone into the register, and for um, the name up here of the plugin, I've changed it to the same as up here. Uh, I've got the short description, unsharp mask and desaturate image, that just tells us what it does. The next line, the long description, tells us more specifically what it does. So it runs an unsharp mask with the amount set to 5, and then it desaturates the image. I've got my copyright information in here. I've got the other reference to uh, the name, as it's going to appear in the menu. We've got the color profile of the image that we expect it to work on, so RGB. Um, obviously, there's no point setting this to set on a grayscale image because one of the steps is going to be to desaturate. If we've already got a desaturated image, then this becomes a redundant plugin. You could just do the extreme um, unsharp mask. Uh, and then I've got my two variables or my two arguments from the function, the image, and the drawable. And if you remember correctly, those always have to be included and they always have to be the first two. Now, it just so happens that we're not gonna use any other inputs for this tutorial, so we're just gonna stick to the basics. We then have the uh, name of the uh, item again, and then finally we have the menu location. So mine's going to be on the image window in the filters menu under the enhance settings. So what I've gone ahead and done is then saved that as extreme unsharp dsat underscore tute uh, dot py dot py. And once again, I've saved that in the GIMP plugins folder that is, if you're using Windows at least, will be on the C drive um, in your user folder. So if you find your GIMP 2.8 folder and stick it in the plugins folder, that's exactly where it needs to go. What I do next is I manually do the task myself, you know, actually using the GIMP, and I just what I'm doing. And I'm going to take note of all of the parameters that I use as well. So whenever there's an option I have to pick, I'll just make a note of that. Uh, I'll just stick that over there so we can see these side by side. Okay, so first I'm going to need an image to work on. Now the first thing I do is I run the unsharp mask from the filters menu. So I go to filters, and... I believe it's in Enhance, it is. Um, so Unsharp Mask, and you can see the options I've got here. Uh, I'm going to set the radius to 5, the amount to 5, and the threshold to 0. Now, I've got here 5 and 0.5, but I actually want the amount to go right up to 5. That's why we're calling this Extreme. So you can see the effect in the uh, image window there that it's going to have. Like I said, this is not particularly desirable. Um, and then what I'm going to do in my script window, I just want to write down those details. 
Okay, so what I've done so far, and this has to be commented, is run the unsharp mask, and then I'm going to just write down the values as well. So radius 5, amount 5, threshold 0. So I'm just taking note of all of the details from that box just so I know when I'm filling in my script what I'm going to need to feed into it. So I run that, looking good. And then the next thing I do is I run the desaturate command and I set the options to lightness. So we go to uh, colors, desaturate, and we go to lightness mode. Okay, so I'm going to hit that and then I'll just write down what I did here. Okay, so just desat and lightness mode. So those are the two things that I'm going to do and that's it. Now, I write that in my code as comments. When I go back and I add in the functions under each of those comments, that means I'm commenting my code as I go. So when I come back to this months from now and I can't remember what I did, the comments are actually there already to remind me. So this is another good little trick to, to keep on doing. So that's easy enough, but we want to turn that into some code. So the first thing we're going to need to do after that is open up the PDB and start getting the actual commands I need to use one at a time. So firstly, I look up the unsharp mask. Now I'll just open up the Python Foo console and then the browser. So remember, we want to open it up through the console because then we can easily copy and paste the information that we want. So the first thing I'm doing is looking for the unsharp mask. So I can just try unsharp. Now you can see there's a few extra options here. There's Python Foo Extreme Unsharp Desaturation. So that's one I've already made as is the one with extra options. And we've got two options here. We've got the plugin unsharp mask and we've got the script foo unsharp mask. So now that I know I've got two that it could be, I need to do some digging. Um, if I go back to the one I used, so I'll just, oh, I'm sorry, I just need to press enter on that. If I go back to the one I actually used, so we'll go to enhance, and then I just hover over this, um, you can see I've got the long description there that's telling me this is the most widely useful method for sharpening an image. So that piece of information is actually something I can look for to differentiate it from the other one. So if I look at the first one, you can see we've got that same description up there, uh, the most widely useful method for sharpening an image. If I click on this one, um, we don't get that. Um, same piece of information. So I know this is actually the one here, the plugin Unsharp Mask. That's the one that the GIMP is actually using. So I can double click that to snatch the code. So there we have it there. And I'll just copy that to my clipboard. And what I'll also do is just read the information in the, um, the parameters for this in the procedure browser just to see what, what arguments it takes. Now we know it takes uh, image and drawable. That's not a surprise to us. We know it also takes a radius, an amount, and a threshold. Now, thankfully, we've already written down those um, details, so we know we're going to be able to use those. Something that caught me out to begin with was this first argument, though, the run mode. So we can see that up here, run mode, integer 32. Now, this actually isn't needed. And when you write your scripts, you ignore this one completely, and you make image the first argument that gets passed in. This does get used if you are running GIMP procedures from the command line, but you and I probably aren't doing that if we're using the GUI version of GIMP. So if you're doing batch editing and stuff like that, then you might start to use these, um, these arguments, but for our purposes, we're not going to touch them. Now, the other thing that we want to pay attention to is not just um, the types uh, the actual things that get put into arguments, but also the type of data it accepts. So we know for radius, that's a float, and amount, that's a float, and for threshold, it's an integer. So if you remember from the very first video, um, you should understand what floats and integers are and what the difference is between them. So I'm going to go to my little script window, and we've got a couple of options for this. Now, I'm going to show you a method which helps you keep what you're doing nice and readable. Um, we're going to set variables for our function arguments. Um, we could hard code the values into the arguments, but it, it's not quite as readable to do that. So I'm going to show you the other way of doing it. I'll show you both ways, but you'll see why I like the one I'm going to use. So first, I'm just going to paste this in, and I can see I've got um, the image, the drawable, the radius, the amount, and the threshold. Now, just above this, 
I'm going to create three variables. I'm going to create a variable for radius, variable for amount, and variable for threshold. Now, the way to do this is just to simply say radius equals 5.0 because it's a float, remember, so we want to say 5.0. Uh, amount, we do the same. Amount equals 5.0, again, because it's a float. And threshold is an integer, so we can just say uh, equals 0. Now, what I've done here, this establishes the variables. If you watch the first video or the second video, I can't remember which, then that should make perfect sense. In the argument that we have here, uh, sorry, in the method that we have here, or the, the function that we're building, um, that we're calling upon here, we've got the item from the project database called sorry, the procedural database, the plugin Unsharp Mask, it calls upon these arguments. Now these are actually referring to variables. These two variables are already set. In fact, they're going to be set down here, but that's absolutely fine. We can, we'll figure that one out. Um, the radius is now taking its value from here. The amount is taking its value from here and the threshold is taking its value from here. The reason I've separated these out rather than just saying 5.0, 5.0, and 0. The reason I would use these variables instead of just hard coding the values in like this is because this is actually quite unreadable. It doesn't tell me um, what I'm editing. If I came back to this three months from now and I wanted to change this to a 3, I wouldn't remember if I was actually changing the amount or the radius. But if I, it's actually just called radius, amount, and threshold, and it, make, it makes it much easier for me to just toggle the values up here and leave this alone. And I know it's always going to work and it's always going to do what I was expecting it to do. So that's why I use variables instead of hard coding them in. Essentially, you can do it however you want, but do yourself a favor and just make it as readable as possible. So if you are going to um, overwrite these variables with hard coded values, leave comments somewhere to at least tell you what order those go in because um, you'll be doing yourself a favor. So the image and the drawable can stay the same. As I said a second ago, they're being supplied by the parameters below in the register function, PF image and PF drawable. So the GIMP knows what those variables means, um, but the other three aren't established anywhere, so I had to add those from my variables. Uh, I'll save that and I'll run it to check that it worked. So remember, we're gonna do it line by line, or not necessarily line by line, but step of the program by step. So even though these are lines, they're all just part of this step here. So I'll save and I need to close GIMP and run it again because I want to make sure that it's doing what I expect. Close without saving. Okay, so obviously I need to restart the GIMP because it's the first time I've used that one. Now I should find that in filters under enhance and uh, I didn't change the name down here. So that's making it hard to read. I'll just save that, and I'm gonna need to restart. Okay, so I've restarted the GIMP to refresh the, the scripts to include the new one that I've saved. I'm gonna look in Filters and Enhance, and then we should see Extreme, Unsharp, and Desaturate Tute. So that's the one that I've been working on. So if I run this, at the moment, all it should do is an Extreme, Unsharp, um, with those values that I coded in. So if I run that, and we can see that that first step works. So, so far, so good. Everything is doing what we want it to do. So now the next thing we have to do is add the desaturate image thing to um, our program as well. So I'm just going to open up the procedure database again via the console. We'll try desat. And we can see we've got GIMP desaturate, GIMP desaturate full, and then the three that I've been working on that also have desat in the title. So if I look at GIMP desaturate, um, I can see that has one parameter. It just takes the drawable. And if I look at this one, it has a drawable and it also has a desaturate mode. And if I look at the desaturate mode, I can see that um, it has things like lightness, luminosity, and average. Now, I remember from my... Um, stuff that I wrote down earlier, that I'm looking for one that can accept a lightness mode. So I know it's going to be this one. Um, if I didn't know it was that one, then I could have used the trick I used for the other one previously and just look at the file description or the long description. So we want, we'll pull this one, copy this over to our script. We'll go underneath the comment so we know what it means. And again, with the desaturate mode, I can create a variable for that. So we'll just say desaturate...
Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'll just look at the way the GIMP writes that. So it has desaturate hyphen lightness. Or what we can also do, rather helpfully, it gives us a zero. Because I'm going to err on the side of readability, we'll go with desaturate lightness. And then we'll save that. So that should work perfectly well. Okay, so save. And we'll go back to filters, script foo, refresh. Uh, I might just undo the previous one because I don't want to keep on doing the same thing over and over again. And then we'll go to filters, enhance, and run it one more time. Now we can see it's getting stuck on something for some reason, something's gone wrong. So because something has gone wrong, what we'll need to do, look at our error console. Our error console isn't giving as much information, which is unhelpful. So what we can try to do is potentially desaturate lightness. That looks like that's fine. Desaturate mode, desaturate mode. That's all fine. Okay, I had some annoying bugs to iron out. And basically, it was all to do with um, that being an underscore um, in Python and it coming from the GIMP procedure browser with the hyphen. So as I was said in a previous video, sometimes you can spend forever looking for a comma and that's the kind of thing that will catch you out. So on with the show. So if I run this now, I've saved it and I've refreshed my script and I've checked it to make sure it works. Uh, we go to enhance and extreme unsharp desaturate and we can see it does both steps side by side so it's perfect that's exactly what we wanted to do now let's just say we um now let's just say we wanted to undo that effect um i can press undo once control z and it only undoes the desaturation and then i have to press undo again to get rid of the unsharp mask now that's quite annoying because I can only undo each step at a time. Now imagine how annoying that would be if there were lots of steps that we did and we had to undo you know, five or six different effects in order to undo um, the effect that we tried to do. What we actually want to do is just undo the effect of the plugin that we've made in one go. So the way we do that is by creating an undo group. Um, you'll probably want to do this all of the time, so it's a good idea to basically learn how to do that now. So we'll go to the procedure database and we'll start looking up how to do that and browse. Now we're gonna look for undo. And we can see there's lots of options for undo, but the one we're looking for here are the GIMP undo group start and the GIMP undo group end. So we're gonna start an undo group and then end the undo group. So what we can see here is it just takes the image, so that's nice and easy. This one just takes the image as well. So I'll just copy those in. Start first, and we copy PDB GIMP image undo group start. I copy that, and we'll stick it up here. So I'll just put my comment up here, start undo group. And then we'll have another comment that says end undo group. Now this is just so I know what my functions actually do when I'm using them. Now these ones are pretty obvious because they are titled uh, undo group, but still it doesn't hurt to for more documentation. I just put this one at the end and then we'll save that Now what that should do in theory is group everything in between together so that we can undo it in one go if we uh, Feel like we need to so just save and refresh Notice you do a lot of saving and refreshing and we'll run it one more time. Okay, so that still works and then I'll just press Control Z to undo it, and you can see it undoes the whole effect in one go. So you've made your first useful GIMP plugin. Now using these principles alone and some careful thinking and detective work, you can basically make anything you want now. We haven't looked at getting new inputs from the user yet, so we'll look at that in the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching, thank you for bearing with me in my bug hunting, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time.